Welcome to the channel and welcome to my review of Codex Harlequins, the army book that is a supplement for games of Warhammer 40k 8th edition. It comes out in pre-order on the 19th of May and is available to buy from the 26th of May, Saturday the 26th of May. Before we begin, as usual, a big thank you, a great big thank you to Games Workshop for sending me this uh, preview copy through to me and other YouTubers and other bloggers out there so we can um, cast our beady eyes over it and um, get our views and thoughts out there for internet land so you can all digest uh, what we can see inside this hallowed tome. So the warriors of the Laughing God are here. The Harlequins are a faction of the faction of the Eldari. Don't hold that against them. They're actually quite good. Space clowns from space. One of the things they are certainly is incredibly squishy. These are Eldari. So every single infantry in this book is only toughness three. And then they have um, bikers, skyweavers and uh, a couple of skimmers floating around and they're low toughness as well. In fact, the only thing that's not low toughness is the new webway gate, which is uh, toughness eight with 14 wounds and a three up save. It also has a five up invulnerable save. It's a fortification, it's a brand new mini and it's 120 points and it's a way for you to deploy stuff off the table and move it through the webway. So after you set up this model, any Eldari units which have not been set up during deployment other than fortifications can be set up in a webway spa rather than being set up on the battlefield. And one unit in a webway spa can emerge from each friendly webway gate at the end of your turn. Um, these gates have to be set up away from the enemy deployment zone. It must be at least 12 inches away from the enemy deployment zone and any enemy models that potentially have set up outside of the deployment zone. And it has to be more than three inches from any other terrain feature or the center of any objective markers. So it can't just sit on an objective marker and score for you. So 12 inches back from the deployment zone, enemy deployment zone, three inches away from objective markers. And at the end of any turn, you can get units out of the webway gate and they basically deploy. It will count as their move. They'll be wholly within three inches of the webway gate and more than nine inches away from enemy models for 120 points. You're probably not gonna use this for Harlequins, because Harlequins are very, very quick. We'll get into that. However, this, this webway gate only has one faction keyword, which is Eldari. So you can set it up on the back of the battlefield and keep a Wraith Knight inside it. In fact, one of the pictures in this book shows a Wraith Knight coming through a webway gate. So um, yeah, if you want to keep your Wraith Knight safe so it doesn't get shot at and then move out in your turn, and blow the enemy to bits, you can for 120 points. There are other ways to deploy in a webway. There are other stratagems, of course, in the Eldar book. There's stratagems in this book, which allow you to uh, deploy in a webway as well. But if you want to play 120 points for the privilege, you can buy a webway gate. Right, back to the Harlequins. Very squishy, toughness three. Um, and the Void Weaver and Star Weaver transports are toughness five, with six wounds and a four up save. But uh, what they do in this book, to prevent L, uh, the Harlequins from being incredibly squishy is give everyone in here a four up invulnerable save through hollow fields. So they might be squishy, but they've got a four up invulnerable save. Now, the transports, the bikes, the infantry, everyone's got a four up invulnerable save, which means Harlequins do not worry about AP value. They'll just take their flat four up invulnerable save. In fact, they're probably more terrified about the humble bolt gun, rapid fire, high uh, volume of fire weaponry. Um, Twin assault cannons will probably terrify them because that's 12 shots wounding them on twos. So uh, you don't want to bring out your big guns when you're fighting Harlequins. Just fire lots and lots of small arms at them. However, they move really, really quickly as well. Harlequin infantry move eight inches apart from the solitaire who moves 12 as a unit on his own. Sky weavers, the bikes move 16 inches. And Void Weaver, Star Weaver is the transports. Well, Void Weaver isn't a transport, that's a gunboat. The Star Weaver is a transport. But these flyers, they move 16 inches. So they move very, very quickly. And everything except for the transports, so the bikes and all the infantry, has a rule called Rising Crescendo, which means models in this unit can charge and advance in the same turn. So when you're looking at models that move eight or Sky Weavers that move 16 inches, and then automatically advance an additional six inches. So that's 22 inches that it can move and they can still charge 
after they've done it. And rising crescendo also means that you can fall back and shoot and charge in the same turn that you fall back. So typically in games of 40k, one of the best things to do with your castle of shooty stuff in the backfield, so say I'm playing Admech against Harlequins or any other type of army, is I'd castle up around my shooty things to prevent um, uh, the bad guys getting to the meat, the nugget inside. Um, because they're going to have to batter their way through the screen that I put in front of them, but it doesn't really work against Harlequins, because they can, uh, when they fall back after hitting the screen, they can use their flip belts and the rising crescendo rule just to flip straight over the top of models and fall back and still charge and shoot in the turn that they do so. So they're very, very tricksy, very, very quick, very, very squishy, four up and vulnerable save, and the Skyweaver's Void Weavers and Star Weavers, so the bikes and the vehicles, all have Mirage launchers, so it's minus one to hit them, making them even more tricksy. So this four up and vulnerable save and minus one to hit and the ability to move all over the place gives Harlequins a resilience and a speed which is rare, which is unique to the flavour of this army. Uh, the minus one to hit is very good, but you can also chuck out a minus one to hit on infantry models in the Phantasmancy Psychic Discipline. There's six psychic powers and two of them in here A minus one to hit. One is Fog of Dreams. They had that one before. Warp charge value of six. If manifested, select an enemy unit within 18 inches of the Psyker invisible to it. And uh, your opponent must subtract one for hit rolls that target Harlequin's infantry unit. So you point at something in the backfield 18 inches away, cast your power at that, and whenever he shoots an infantry unit, all infantry units that that unit is shooting at is minus one to hit. But if you really want to protect a specific unit, you can cast Veil of Tears, a new psychic power, on a Harlequin's infantry unit within 18 inches. This is a warp charge value of seven. And until the next to your psychic phase, subtract one from hit rolls made against that unit. So Veil of Tears targets a specifically specific um, infantry unit in your army within 18 inches of the Psyker, a specific Harlequin unit, and Fog of Dreams hits an enemy unit and affects a uh, minus one to hit all enemy units. You've also got some stratagems. There's a two point stratagem called Lightning Fast Reactions. Use this stratagem when a Harlequin's unit from your army is targeted by a ranged or melee weapon. Subtract one from all hit rolls made against that unit for the rest of the phase. So you could put this on transports as well. Transports have Mirage launchers, minus one to hit. Chuck lightning fast reactions on them. It's a har any Harlequin's unit, that'd be minus two to hit that transport if you really, really want to keep something alive. Or if you really want to keep your jet bikes as they zip up the table, chuck lightning fast reactions on them. Um, other little things to help keep your squishy units alive. Prismatic blur, new strategy, one command point. Use this stratagem after Harlequin unit from your army is advanced. This, that unit has a three up invulnerable save until the start of your next turn. So it will last your turn, it will last throughout the enemy's turn. Give them a three up invulnerable save instead of a four up invulnerable save. Remember you can cast that on any Harlequin's unit as well. So you could um, cast it on a transport, cast it on troops, whatever you want to do it. Um, you've got Aisha's Weeping. Where's that one gone? I wrote it down somewhere. Aisha's Weeping, another one point stratagem. Select a Harlequin's unit from your army that suffered casualties during the phase. Improve the invulnerable save by one to a maximum of three up until the end of the turn. So with Aisha's Weeping for one command point, you've got to lose a model in that unit though. You get a three up and bun. Prismatic Burr for one command point, you get a three up and bun. So suddenly Harlequins are quick, three up and vulnerable, minus one to hit them. Yeah, they get where they need to be. And with the new stratagems and the new psychic powers, they're even more uh, guaranteed to get where, or likely to get where they need to be without getting um, paying the squishy tax of being shot at by bolters. All right, before we get any further, let's talk about Harlequin's specific rules. So there's one troop's choice in here, the Harlequin's troop, and they have defenders, the Black Library, which eventually, essentially gives them um, uh, objective secured, their troop's choices, so they will always score an objective regardless of the number of models, unless there's another unit controlling that objective with a similar rule. And they have mask forms. 
So a mask form is their chapter traits. If your army is battleforged, all units in a Harlequin's detachment gain a mask form, so long as every unit in that detachment is from the same mask. Everything in here can get a mask, all the transports, um, your Skyweavers, Solitaire, everything's got a mask. So there are six mask forms to run through. Let's run through them now. So Midnight Sorrow, The Art of Death. Units with this form can move an additional D6 inches when they fall back. In addition, units with this form can consolidate up to 6 inches. Now, in any other army, that wouldn't sound great. But in Harlequins, moving an extra D6 inches when they move 8 anyway, and can flip over units, and if you're a solitaire, 12 inches, and flip over units and attack other units and fall back and shoot. Moving further... That's quite scary. Consolidating up to six inches as well is, is a pretty good one in a Harlequin army. The Veil Path, Riddlesmiths. At the start of each fight phase, roll two dice and discard your highest result. Until the end of the phase, each time your opponent targets a unit with this form in the fight phase and makes a hit roll that before modifiers exactly matches your dice result, that hit roll fails. So, for example, I'm fighting someone. Start of the fight phase, I roll two dice, I get a one and a two. And um, every time, and you discard the highest result, which leaves me with a one. So every time your opponent, each time your opponent targets a unit with this form and makes a hit roll of one before modifiers, uh, that hit roll fails. So you don't want to roll low. If I roll a five or a six and discard the six, then on fives, when they hit you in combat, if they roll fives, it won't hit you. So Riddle Smith's is okay but if you roll low of the two dice discarding the highest hitting on that, that you know it's they've got to exactly match your dice roll and if it's ones to hit i mean what out there hits on ones nothing so you've got one in six chance of that never coming up and it's in the fight phase so uh yeah frozen stars hysterical fury if a unit with this form charges in the charge phase any unit Add one to their attacks characteristic until the end of the ensuing fight phase. This is the one that everyone's going to bring. Plus one attack. Universal. If it charges, add one to their attacks characteristic. Um, it's nice. It's simple. It's easy to remember. And solitaire and solitaires, in particular solitaires, but Harlequins really like getting up there and chopping you up. Uh, Soaring Spite, Serpent's Brood. Models with this form that can fly or embarked upon a transport that can fly. Treat all pistols they are equipped with as Assault 1 weapons during the turn in which they, or the transport they're in, advanced. Um, why is that important? Well, um, if you advance, you can't fire pistol weaponry, right? You can only fire Assault weaponry at minus one to hit. Um, in addition, these models do not suffer the penalty to their hit rolls for shooting and assaulting weapons during a turn in which they advance. So, you've got your troop loaded up inside a um, Star Weaver, and it advances. And remember, Star Weavers move 16 inches plus D6, so that could be up to 22 inches. Basically, it's about 20 inches away on average. You're going to get 20 odd inches away. And when it advances, you're firing your pistols out. And you can't fire your pistols out because it advanced. But with Soaring Spite, Serpent's Brood, you can. And you won't suffer the minus one to hit because those pistols suddenly become assault weaponry. Remember, a Harlequin Troop as well, for those that don't know, every single model in a Harlequin Troop can take a fusion pistol, can replace their shuriken pistol with a neuro disruptor or fusion pistol. They could do it before, they could do it now. Fusion pistols are only six inch range. So what's the bother you're wondering? Well, for those that don't know, fusion pistols are melt guns. They're six inch range melt guns. They're strength eight, minus four AP, D6 damage. And yes, their standard infantry can all run around with six inch melt guns. Six inches is all you need sometimes. Next Mars form, Dreaming Shadow Somber Sentinels. When a unit with this form fails a morale test, only one model from the unit must flee. Um, so you're not you're losing a bunch, you're just losing one. In addition, each time a model with this form is slain or flees, roll a d6 before removing that model. And on a four up, that model can either shoot with one of its ranged weapons as if it were the shooting phase, or make a single attack as if it were the fight phase. So a 50-50 chance of having another shot with your fusion pistol. Or uh, having us another smack with your sword every time you die. Uh, Silent Shroud, 
Dance of Nightmares Made Flesh. Subtract one from the leadership characteristic of enemy units while they're within six inches of units from your army with this form. In addition, whenever your opponent takes a morale test for a unit that's within six inches of any units from your army with this form, they must roll two dice and discard the lowest result. So a way of making leadership uh, more of a thing, particularly when people are rolling morale tests. And there are other leadership modifiers in this book as well. It seems like the Harlequins really know how to sow some fear. Those are the mask forms. Let's talk about the psychic powers. Before we jump into the psychic powers, you've got a Shadow Seer in here, which is one of the two HQ choices that you can bring in the Harlequins book. It's not got very many entries, seven, nine units. There's not a lot of units in here. I haven't counted them all. Um, the two HQs, Troop Master, Shadow Seer. Previously, the Shadow Seer could uh, new Smite and one power from the Harlequin's powers. Now it knows Smite and two powers from the Harlequin's powers, and it can cast two a turn every turn, which is good because you've got six powers now. Now, I mentioned two of them. I mentioned um, Fog of Dreams and Veil of Tears, which are minus one to hitting infantry units. You've also got Twilight Pathways. I think this is one of the old ones. It's basically a pimped up uh, warp time. Um, oh, uh, a warp time Diet Coke, warp time from the Chaos De uh, Demon, Chaos Space Marines Codex. So warp charge value of six. Pick a friendly Harlequin's unit within three inches of the Psyker and it can move again. Um, you cannot use Twilight Pathways on a unit more than once in each Psychic phase. It's interesting that they put that in there because in match play games, you'd never use a power other than Smite more than once in each Psychic phase. But there's a rule here that you can never use it once more than once in each Psychic phase, even if you're playing narrative or open play or stuff like that. But yeah, unit within three inches of Psyker, they move again. Remember, Harlequins can move a long way and charge and yeah. Twilight Pathways is pretty good. Mirror of Minds used to be a warp charge value of eight. Now it's gone down to a warp charge value of seven and it's a way of dishing out mortal wounds. So you roll seven and if manifested, select an enemy unit within 24 inches of the Psyker, then both players roll a D6. And if the Harlequins player rolls equal or higher than their opponents, then they suffer one mortal wound and you repeat this process until the target is destroyed. So, Quite simply, pick an enemy unit, 24 inches. Any enemy unit within 24 inches, you've got to get a war charge value of 7. You both roll a dice. And if you beat it, they lose a mortal wound. And then you do it again and again and again until they beat your dice roll. You've got to get equal or higher as a Harlequins player. The opponent must beat you. So it's a way of doing mortal wounds. There's another way of doing mortal wounds as well. Um, I think it's Shards of Light. Yeah, Shards of Light is a new one. Warp Charge value of 7. Select an enemy unit within 18 inches of the Psyker. And that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds and must subtract 1 from its leadership characteristic until the start of your next phase. So Shards of Light is a smite power essentially with a Warp Charge value of 7 instead of 5. D3 mortal wounds. Which is good. I mean, say you've got your um, uh, Shadow Seer. Forget his name. The guy casting the psychic powers, you could smite once and chuck out shards of light once, do D3 mortal wounds, D3 mortal moons. The thing is with smite is it hits the closest enemy unit. The thing with shards of light is it's any enemy unit within 18 inches of the psyche and visible to it. Bam, D3 mortal wounds and minus one to their leadership role. Um, this is where these leadership things come in. Every now and then in the Death Guard Codex, when I was reviewing it, when I was looking through it, there was little bits about mortal wounds here and mortal wounds there. When I had a good look through this Harlequin book, there's loads of little bits in there. I'm probably not going to re refer to all of them in this review, but there's loads of little bits here or there where they negatively affect the opponent's leadership. So morale could definitely be a thing when fighting against Harlequins. Um, you've got Webway Dance as well. Webway Dance has a warp charge value of 7. If manifested, then until the start of your next psychic phase, roll a d6 whenever a friendly Harlequin's unit within 6 inches of the Psyche loses a wound, and on a 6, that wound is not lost. So it's like Iron Hands Chapter Tactics. You've got to be... It's a warp charge value of 7. You've got to be within 6 inches of the Psyche, but you're going to be not losing wounds on a 6 up. Now, it's... Doesn't sound great, but having played Iron Hands Chapter Tactics, rolling that six up and ignoring those wounds is good. And on a squishy army like Harlequins, um, whenever you lose a wound, it's not the last wound. So you take multiple wounds on one of your um, uh, Star Weavers or Void Weavers or whatever those transport things are called. Sorry, my mind's all over the place. Every time you lose a wound, roll a dice, six up, don't lose that wound. 
that one, Warp Charge Rally S7, I can see that one coming along as well. But Shards of Light is pretty good. Um, Fog of Dreams, Veil of Tears, pretty good. That These are good psychic powers that help add to the Harlequin arsenal. Right, let's have a look through some of these stratagems while we're in the back of the book. Stratagems are great. I like these stratagems. There's three pages of them, which is interesting because it's a small codex, yet they've got a lot of stratagems. Some of these stratagems are in the Eldar book or the Dark Eldar book, such as the Haywire Grenade or Fire and Fade. Um, so just as we saw in the Codex Space Marine books, when Dark Angels came out, when Blood Angels came out, there was some cut and paste generic stratagems that all space marines know there's some cut and paste generic stratagems that all the harlequins know because all of the eldar know so fire and fade for one command point is you can move again seven inches as if it was the movement phase after you've just shot so you can jump up so it's basically move shoot move so you can move up behind cover shoot jump back down um, behind cover again um, so i think that's why it's three pages long because there's some generic ones, some what are now Eldari generic um, stratagems. But of course, there's some really juicy specific Harlequins one. And the, the straight at the top, two command points, the great Harlequin, two command points. Use this stratagem before the battle and you pick a troop master from your army. And you can only use this stratagem once per battle, by the way. You can't pick more than one troop master. It says just him just once before a battle spend two command points and your troop master becomes the great harlequin and gains this special ability called will of the laughing god so in the fight phase re-roll hit rolls are one for friendly mask units that are within six inches of your model so it's like the captain ability but only works in the fight phase re-roll hit rolls of one for anyone within six inches of the great harlequin which is a two command point stratagem um, you've got Enigmas of the Black Library, which costs between one and three command points. That allows you to take extra relics. And every character in here can take your relics, including the Solitaire. Solitaire can never take a Warlord trait, which we'll get onto in a minute. But your Troop Master, your Shadow Seer, your Solitaire, they can all take... Um, they can all take... What am I talking about? relics and your death jester he's a character as well any character sorry can take a, a relic including the solitaire you've got webway assault harlequin's infantry or biker units from your army can be placed in the webway instead of putting on the battlefield it costs you a command point so why do you need that webway gate because spend a command point and put a unit in it for three command points you can put two harlequin's infantry or biker units in the webway prismatic blur we mentioned hero's path two command points if you've got a death jester solitaire and shadows here in your movement phase and are within six inches of the other each other you can pick them up and place each model anywhere on the battlefield that's more than nine inches away from enemy units now this is a curious one because it says use this stratagem at the start of your movement phase in which a death jester solitaire and shadow seer from your army within six inches of each other right that's clear six inches of each other remove all three models you pick them all up and you place them down more than nine inches away from enemy units. But it doesn't say, it says you can set up each model anywhere on the battlefield that is more than nine inches away from an enemy unit. So if your Death Jester, Solitaire and Shadow Seer are all together within six inches of each other, you can pick them up and place them at three different points of the battlefield if you want to. After picking them up a unit to get all three of them that were close together, you can put three of them down miles away from each other so long as they're more than nine inches away from enemy units. Do command points. Um, Kergorax Jest, now Kegorax, Kergor, that's the laughing god, Segorak, I don't know how to say it. I'm slaughtering this name, Solly Harlequin's players, your laughing god guy, one command point, when an enemy unit falls back from an Har Harlequin's or unit from your army, so you're in combat, and the enemy fall back away from you, after the enemy is finished moving, providing no other enemy units are within one inch of the unit, spend a command point, and you can shoot at the enemy unit that fell back as if it was the shooting phase. Only cost you one command point, and there's no negatives to shooting. So you're in combat with some, I don't know, plague marines, uh, which only move five, so they can only fall back five inches. They can't fall back 
out of your pistol range, your six inch pistol range, and you can shoot them for one command point as if it were the shoot phase. Out of turn shooting. We like that one. Uh, another couple of one command points. One vessel of fate to use this stratagem in your psychic phase. A shadow seer from your army can cast another psychic power. Warrior acrobats use this stratagem in your movement phase when a Harlequin's infantry unit from your army advances and it adds six inches to the move characteristics instead of rolling a die. So your infantry is moving eight inches. You spend this command point, it's moving an additional six. You don't have to roll. Put it on your solitaire. Um, he's a Harlequin's infantry unit. That means your solitaire's moving 18 inches and he can charge afterwards. Um, uh, Mirthless Hatred. Use this stratagem when a Harlequin's unit from your army is chosen to fight. Reroll, fail to hit rolls, and fail to wound rolls for this unit that targets Slanesh units until the end of the phase. It would be great if it was all units, it's just Slanesh. Um, Fire and Fade, we talked about War Dancers. Three command points. Use this stratagem at the end of the fight phase. Select a Harlequin unit from your army that's already fought, and, and that unit can immediately pile in and fight again. Um, and that one's pretty good, but it costs three command points. Um, there's the Labyrinth of Laughs. I think that's the one that says you can deploy more than one unit from a webway gate. Yep, that's the one. So instead of just putting one out of turn, you can put two out of turn. I talked about Lightning Fast Reactions, um, which is a Harlequin unit for two command points, minus one to hit rolls. You've got the Haywire Grenade. And then you've got the stratagems that are specific to the masks, which are all kind of okay really um right warlord traits so a solitaire can never have a warlord trait but everyone else can all your other characters can and uh the generic warlord traits roll like this which is number one luck of the laughing god reroll hit rolls wound rolls and damage rolls are one for your warlord or give your warlord a three up invulnerable save against melee weapons only or Add two to your Warlord's move characteristic. In addition, add one to the distance your Warlord can move each time he advances. Four back charges, performs a heroic intervention, piles in or consolidates. Or re-roll failed charge rolls made for your Warlord and any friendly mask units while they're within six inches of your Warlord. That's the one a lot of people are going to take. <laughs> re-roll charges for your Warlord or mask units within six inches. Yep, that one's the best. Um... Or each wound roll of a six made by your warlord's attacks in the fight ways inflict one mortal wound in addition to the normal player damage. Or this is the other one that other people are going to take. Um, this is the command point farm, but I like it. It's very narrative and fluffy. Player of the twilight. So once per battle, you can re-roll a hit, wound, or roll, or save roll made for your warlord. But in addition, if your army is battleforged and your warlord is on the battlefield, roll a d6 each time you... Or your opponent, you or your opponent, this is the critical thing, uses a stratagem. Now, previously, for example, say it says you and your opponent uses a stratagem, and on the six you get it back, right? There's always a one in six chance of doing it. But here it says, if the dice roll exactly matches the number of command points spent to use that stratagem, then you gain that many command points. So normally it's a six to get command points back, but now every time you and your opponent uses a one command point stratagem, you want to roll a one, you get that command point back. But if you or your opponent roll uses a two command point stratagem, then you need to roll a two and you'll get that back. Or a three and you'll get that back for three command points. Now the good thing about this is it's just a one in six chance, but most of these command point farms are. Some of them are a five up, I grant you that. Some of them are a five up but some of them are a five up for you only. This is for you and your opponent and every time a stratagem is used. And remember, there's a lot more command points now in your standard battalion. You get, what is it now? I want to say eight plus the three, 11. Why have I got eight on my brain? I think it's eight now. What I'm saying is after the big fat drop, there's a lot more command points than usual. And being able to have a farm more than one command point back, being able to farm two or three, that one's very good. Is it better than Player of the Light? Rerolling charge rolls for your Warlord and or Mask units within six inches of him? Dunno. It's certainly going to be an easy one to, to do. Um, mask Warlord traits for the named Mask. So Midnight Sorrow, 
Um, each hit roll of a six for your warlord in the fight phase causes two hits instead of one. Veil path. During deployment, you can set up your warlord in the web lake, webway instead of placing him on the battlefield. And then he can emerge at the end of any of your movement phases so long as he's uh, more than nine inches away from um, an enemy unit. Furthermore, you can use the webway assault stratagem twice. Frozen stars. On a roll of d6 each time a model from a frozen stars unit from your army within six inches of your warlord loses its final wound. And on a six, that wound is not lost. Dreaming Shadow, add one to any somber sentinel rolls made for Dreaming Shadow uh, units from your army within six inches, of your, six inches of your Warlord. Add two instead while there are any Necron units on the battlefield. What is somber shadows? All right, let me get this right. In addition, each time a model with this form is slain or flees, roll a d6 and on a four up they can shoot or fight. That's what happens if you have that mask form on a four up. So the Dreaming Shadow Warlord trait is within six inches of him. You add one to that. So they do it on a three. That's pretty pokey. Uh, Soaring Spike. Um, your Warlord can disembark from a transport even after it has moved. And Silent Shroud, the final joke. Uh, if your Warlord is slain in the fight phase, roll a d6 on a two, two plus. The unit that killed your Warlord suffers d3 mortal wounds after it's finished making all of its attacks. And on a six, the enemy unit suffers d6 mortal wounds. Oh yeah, that Soaring Spite one reminded me of a uh, stratagem that I wanted to talk about. So Soaring Spite Warlord traitors, your Warlord can disappear from a transport even after it's moved. For one command point, you've got this Sky Stride ability for the Soaring Spite uh, infantry. Um, mask form and uh, use this stratagem just before a soaring spike infantry unit consolidates instead of moving towards the nearest enemy model because whenever you consolidate you have to go to cl closest enemy unit unit instead consolidates up to six inches towards the nearest soaring spike transport from your army and if all models in the unit end this move within three inches of the transport they may immediately embark upon it um, as if it was the movement phase, and even if they disembarked the transport during the same turn. So the Soaring Spite Mask people can get out of a transport, they can shoot, they can assault, they can consolidate back into the transport and get back in again if it's staying quite close by, which is interesting. This Soaring Spite Mask, remember, is that models with this form that can fly or embarked in a transport that can fly, treat all pistol weapons that they're equipped with as assault one weapons, and they don't suffer the penalty to their hit rolls for shooting assault weapons during the turn in which they advance. So they're always going to be advancing. They're always going to be firing their pistols, potentially jumping out, shooting, assaulting, and jumping back in transports again, which is a bit tricksy, which is what Harlequins are all about. Right, uh, Enigmas of the Black Library. These are the relics. Remember, you can give these to a solitaire. Now, in there, there is a nasty sword. There is a nasty shuriken pistol, as you would expect, um, with uh, increased AP or damage. Uh, but there is the Mask of Secrets, which the bearer increases the leadership characteristic by one. In addition, all enemy units reduce their lead leadership characteristic by one while they're within six inches of the bearer. There's the suit of hidden knives, roll a d6 each time a hit roll of one is made for an enemy model targeting the wearer in the fight phase and on a two up that model unit suffers a mortal wound after the unit has resolved all of its attacks, which is interesting. Um, that's in the fight phase, so you're getting hit and each time a hit roll of one is made for an enemy model targeting, targeting the wearer. Roll D6 each time a hit roll of one is made. So they've got to try and hit you, and a couple of ones will be there. And then on a two up, you're bouncing mortal wounds back, which is again fight phase. The Star Mist Raiment, the wearer has a three up and vulnerable save. In addition, units can't fire over to watch at the wearer in the turn which they advanced. Now it'd be great to put that on the Solitaire, but Solitaires already have a three up and vulnerable save. Mind you, it still might be great to put that on the Solitaire because They'll still have a three up and vulnerable save, but they can't have Overwatch shot at them. That's interesting. Uh, the Laughing God's Eye. Friendly Harlequins will automatically pass morale tests while they're within six inches of the wearer. Automatic morale test pass. That's nice. In addition, roll a d6 each time a friendly Harlequins unit suffers a mortal wound in the psychic phase. And on the six up, that mortal wound is ignored. 
Kegarax Rose. Kegarax Rose is a Har Harlequin's Kiss, which is re-roll failed wound rolls for this weapon. And when attacking this infantry, this weapon has a damage of three. And we like Harlequin's Kisses because they're, they're, they are strength four. But uh, so you need that re-roll to wound because strength four ain't that high. But damage three versus infantry. Midnight's Chime is for the Midnight Sorrow. Uh, once per battle at the beginning of the fight phase, the bearer can activate the Midnight's Charm until the end of the phase. All Midnight Sorrow units increase their attacks characteristics by one while they're within six inches of the bearer. That's just mean. Everyone getting plus one attack while they're within six inches of the bearer. And yeah, that's pretty mean. These are the guys that can move an additional six inches when they fall back. Or in addition, when they consolidate, they move an extra six inches. But increasing your attack's characteristic by one, wouldn't you just take the uh, Frozen Stars, Hysterical Fury, Midnight uh, Mask form instead to give everyone plus one to their attack's characteristics in the fight phase when they charge? If you want a power and ability like that. You've got the Ghoul Mask for the Frozen Stars. Um, the wearer of the Ghoul Mask can attempt to deny one psychic power in each enemy psychic phase in the same manner of a psyker. Uh, in addition, add one to all the deny witch tests for the bearer. Then you've got Fal Choose Talon. Um, no idea how to pronounce that. Soaring Spike model only while the wearer is embarked on a Soaring Spike transport. That vehicle can move an additional six inches in the movement phase. In addition, if the transport's destroyed, it never blows up and it never blows up. You just remove it and no disembarking models are slain by an explosion. Basically, transport moves six inches further and it can't explode when it dies. Uh, the skin tilt, another thing for the silent shroud, <laughs> the troop master or shadow seer only. And you can increase the range of their wearer's aura's ability by three inches. Um, there's a gun for a death jester for the dreaming shadow. There is a mirror stave for the... It, it replaces a mist stave for the veiled path. So pimped weaponry in there. And those are your relics. Just two pages of relics. That's the psychic powers. That is the stratagems. Now let's talk about the units themselves. So in the HQ section, you have the Troop Master and the Shadow Seer. Now the Neuro Disruptor used to be a Flesh Bane weapon in 7th edition. And it got a bit pants. It went down to Strength 3, AP minus 3, D3. Well, it's gone up to Strength 4, and that's it. Strength 4, AP minus 3, D3. And if it targets, if you target a vehicle with this weapon, it has a damage characteristic of 1 instead of D3. But it's gone up one more strength, so it isn't entirely useless. The scythe on the front of the Death Jester. So that's the HQs, Troop Master, Shadow Seer. Then you have the troops, which is your troops choice. And yes, they can all take fusion pistols still. Um, the guns are still, the weapons are still the same. Harlequin's Blade, Harlequin's Caress, Harlequin's Embrace, Harlequin's Kiss. But instead of flat strength, 5, 4, 4, they are now strength plus 2, strength plus 1, strength plus 1. They're essentially the same but it's a plus to strength rather than a flat strength. Um, that matters because if you're hitting something with a flat strength five, no matter what you do, and um, you put minus one strength on that unit, then when they hit, they're still hitting at strength five because that's what the weapon does. If it's a plus to strength and you drop the strength of that unit, then it compounds with any negatives that might happen to your strength. Um, but if a weapon is strength 10, then when it hits, it's strength 10, if, regardless of whether it's a melee weapon or a shooting weapon. So having the melee weapons as, as pluses to strength rather than flat strengths, I guess that's why they've done that. Um, yeah, so that's your troop choice. Death Jester, the scythe thing at the front of his gun is still there for show. It doesn't do anything. Uh, <laughs> so he's still got four attacks, but strength three, he's not really great at punching stuff and his shrieker cannon still does what the shrieker cannon does still um assault one or assault three strength six minus three ap uh death is not enough still is the same rule if any models flee from a unit uh in the same term that has been attacked by this model then you can choose the first model that flees instead of your opponent 
You have solitaires and the elites. Solitaires still do what they do. They've still got a harlequin's caress. They've still got a harlequin's kiss. They're still moving 12 with a three up and vulnerable save. Eight attacks, which is crazy. Hitting on twos. Um, but of course you can give them some a juicy harlequin's kiss now if you want to. So you're in a flat three damage to infantry and re-rolling to wound versus infantry rather than uh, just wounding on a four up. Um, that's the solitaire. And then in the fast attack slot you have sky weavers, and then in the heavy slot you have a void weaver, and then in the transport slot you have um, star weavers, and that's it for the Harlequins Codex. As mentioned, the bikes and the skimmers all have Mirage Lodges, so it's minus one to hit. But uh, the void weaver, the prismatic cannon, used to be heavy, used to be heavy uh, assault, a heavy D6 uh, or a heavy D3 or a heavy one, depending on which gun you are firing, dispense, focused or lance, but now it's assault. So you can move it and hit on threes finally, rather than moving it and hitting on fours, because it was silly as a heavy gun. And the strength, AP and damage of all those shots is the same, just replace the word heavy for the word assault and you get the idea of what the Void Weaver Prismatic Cannon does. The entry for the Sky Weavers is unchanged, that's your skimmers, that's your bikes, so they're essentially less effective um, shining spears. Um, star boluses are still grenades and essentially the entry, I think the entry from the index to the codex is pretty much exactly the same. Well, it is exactly the same, but I guess they've gone down five points, so there's that. So yes, they still only have three attacks as well. And talking about things that are the same, the troop master entry is, is basically exactly the same. Um, yeah, looking at it, two of them in front of me, they're cut and pasted. Some words have been moved around but um it's still the same thing the troop master still does the same thing still got choreographer of war so in the fight phase re-roll fail wound rolls for all friendly mask units that were within six inches of him just a couple of words like that changed um, but it's still the same unit entry for your troop master and then we end where we started at the webway gate i guess it goes without saying that it's a mobile and uh, it goes without saying that when it dies it doesn't blow up you just uh remove it from the battlefield that's it not very many entries in this book not much to talk about um, most of the unit entries have stayed the same except for that big gun on the um, back of the void weaver uh, but the thing that this book does give you is the stratagems and the um, psychic powers that will make your very squishy harlequins unit uh, units a bit more resilient so there's more opportunities to get minus one to hit on your infantry there's more opportunities in here to get your infantry up to a three up save or indeed your bikes up to a three up save. Uh, there's the mask forms to play around with. Harlequins have always been a finesse army. Um, you've got to really know what you're doing to play with them well. Because they are so squishy, um, uh, they're, they're an unforgiving army to be a new player with. Because bolt guns, they don't like bolt guns. They don't like high mast, high firepower. Um, what they do like doing is moving very, very quickly across the battlefield and getting in amongst um, your guys and flipping around all over the place and sowing seeds of destruction in the backfields. In the backfield. So finesse army, squishy army, it's a bit tougher, it's a bit more resilient. Um, these mask forms in a skilled Harlequin player's hand with some of the combinations with the Warlord traits in here are going to be very interesting. Uh, the Webway Gate. I think we're going to see the Webway Gate in more Eldar or Dark Eldar armies, to be honest, than we are going to see it in the Harlequin book. We shall see. But it's an interesting addition if you want to bring it along. Uh, I think I'll wrap up here at the risk of... I'm not going to go through all the points because they've been linked all over the internet already. Everything's gone down by a little bit. Just a little bit. Your army will be cheaper if you play with Harlequins. Uh, so yeah, I'll wrap up here. Thank you very much to Games Workshop for sending this book through to me. Thank you everyone for listening and thank you for the patrons for supporting me. You guys are awesome. If you want to become a patron, I encourage you to do so. Yeah, um, I appreciate the support. I'm sure I'll catch you in the Discord chat rooms. I know there's a couple of Harlequin players in there where we can chew over the fat of this book. And uh, stand by for DeploymentZone.tv coming on the 1st of June. Anyway, thank you everyone for listening. Happy Wargaming.